Hello students, I welcome you all to this session. I am Vishali Kikan and today in this session we are going to talk about the basic semiconductor devices. We will be talking about the various type of devices uh, that we require for the VLSI industry and we will be seeing the introduction to the semiconductors. So the various topics are the uh, introduction to the semiconductor, then we will be seeing the basic semiconductor devices, then we will be seeing the basics of the IC processing. So first of all we should know what is a semiconductor. The semiconductor is a device which is having the conductivity in between the conductor and the insulator. The conductivity can further be controlled with the help of the dopants. If I am increasing or decreasing the amount of dopants, the conductivity will be increasing or decreasing. So then we have silicon and germanium as the examples of the semiconductor. I hope you have uh, uh, studied about both of them. Then we have some compound semiconductors and a very good example is gallium arsenide, GAS. Then we have silicon germanium, silicon carbide, then we have uh, iron p indium phosphate as well so we have many more compound semiconductor as well so this is the periodic table and here you can find that these are my semiconductors silicon and germanium before silicon and germanium these are aluminium and gallium these are both my p type of element and phosphorus and arsenic these are my n type of element so all of these elements are basically used in vlsi industry so you can see a detailed description of uh, the vlsi industry material so actually we use mostly boron so in the p type dopant we will be using the boron and here we will be using mostly the silicon and here we will be using the phosphorus and the arsenic so the green ones represent the n type dopant this represents the p type dopant and this represents the silicon which is used around 98 percent of times so now here you can see if i have uh, this this is as my valence band and this is my electron some energy is required for this electron to jump to the valence band and this is called the energy gap so now you can see this is my nuclei and uh, you can see we have different kind of band gap based upon the different type of materials so it band gap is actually the gap energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band so valence band is represented by ev conduction band is represented by ec band gap is the difference of energy between both of them now coming to the various type of material we have aluminium so here uh, the aluminium and sodium are acting as the conductors you can see the valence band and the conduction band are overlapping here also you can see they are connected to each other now uh, we don't require any kind of energy there is no energy gap in between them now the silicon silicon is having at the energy gap of 1.1 electron volt so here uh, we have the valence band and the conduction band and some small energy gap between them now the silicon dioxide you can see here we have very high energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band which is around 8 electron volt so now you can see uh, the resistance is 2.7 micro ohm centimeter here it is 4.7 micro ohm centimeter it is increased here it is uh, nearly around 10 raised to power 10 micro ohm centimeter but here in the case of insulator resistance will be the highest it will be greater than 10 raised to power 20 micro ohm centimeter then only i will be classifying uh, the element as the insulator now this is the crystal uh, structure of the silicon so it is actually having a tetrahedron type of crystal structure i will be talking about the tetrahedron type of crystal structure in detail in some next videos i hope you will be staying with me in the next videos so now you can see uh, in the in the silicon we have four uh, electrons in the outermost shell in the uh, nearby silicon atom also we have four electrons in the outermost shell so these are bonded with the help of covalent bond so we have the shared electrons and this is how the silicon will be completing its valence band so uh, this is how we have the structure of silicon and now a very big doubt 
I am telling you from the very first video that we are using 98% uh, time the substrate as the silicon. But why? Why silicon is used as a substrate? Okay, we have studied about various other type of compound uh, semiconductors as well. We have uh, germanium as well. Then why silicon? First of all, it is abundant and it is inexpensive. We can make it from the sand. So we can, uh, it's the next element after oxygen, which is uh, abundant on the earth is uh, silicon. So it is inexpensive. Then it has the thermal stability. If I talk about germanium, it will melt around 100 degrees Celsius, but uh, it will be uh, valid of the devices which we make from the germanium. It will be uh, valid up to 100 degrees Celsius, but the devices or the chips that I fabricate with the help of uh, uh, silicon that will be acting or that will be working properly up to 150 degree uh, Celsius. Also, the melting temperature is 14, 14 degree Celsius, which is high. So lots of thermal processes are required for the manufacturing of the IC, which will be easily used with the higher thermal stability of the silicon. On the other hand, if I am using any kind of uh, compound semiconductor, like if I am using gallium arsenide and if I am supplying very high thermal energy at some particular step for the fabrication of uh, IC, so in the thermal energy, with the help of thermal energy only, it will be getting degraded. So this is how uh, we, we must have a very high thermal stability. And I will be talking in, de in detail about what kind of thermal stability, what temperature are required for each and every process. We require temperature up to 1200 degrees Celsius. Okay. And the gallium arsenide will be degrading. So this is how we have a very big advantage of silicon, which is thermal stability. Then we have the silicon dioxide, which is a strong dielectric and it is relatively easy to form. And uh, the silicon dioxide will be forming the layer on the silicon and it will be acting as, a, as an insulator on the surface as well. And it will be acting as a protective covering for the silicon as well. So I hope now you understood so, this silicon has a great affinity for oxygen and it will be uh, forming itself a dielectric material on its surface, uh, which will be protecting it as well. Silicon dioxide can be used as a diffusion doping mask as well. We use uh, the silicon dioxide layer in our processes also. So first process is done uh, on the silicon by its own. So this is how we have a good advantage of having silicon. Now coming to the end type doped silicon. So with the help of the impurities, the impurities will be always uh, going and taking the vacant site. So here you can see we have various silicon atoms. We have gaps also here. But if I am uh, putting the arsenic as an impurity, it will be uh, taking the site of a silicon atom only. So this is acting as a substitutional site or it is uh, taking the vacancy created by the silicon atom. So now uh, it has one extra atom. So this one extra atom will be going into the gap and it will be providing the extra conductivity. So what is happening to the energy gap? So energy gap is shifted at this portion. So now you can see the effective energy gap is now here only 0.05 electron volt. From 1.1 electron volt, it is reduced to 0.05 electron volt. This is how we have high conductivity. Now P type of uh, material when doped, so it will be causing a hole. So now whenever we have a hole here, the conduction bands acceptor energy level will be coming down. Okay. So now here also we have 0.05 electron volt of energy gap, but here the conduction bands energy uh, has energy level has came down. So this is how we have different type of doping and with the help of different type of doping, we can change uh, the uh, we can change uh, the acceptance energy and we can change uh, the resistivity and conductivity and we can uh, change whatever electronic parameter that I require. So now this is the hole movement. So this is how the hole is moving. So here you can see here we have a hole. So let's suppose here we have an electron. 
now electron will be moving to the hole so here you can see electron move to this hole and at its own place it has created a hole now here also the electron has moved to the hole and it at its own place it has created a hole so this is the movement of uh, holes this is the reverse uh, direction in which the electrons are moving so holes will be always uh, in the reverse direction wherever my electron is moving so now uh, this is the diagram which represents the relation between the dopant concentration and the resistivity here you can see if i am increasing the dopant concentration the resistivity will be decreasing so with the increase in dopant concentration i will be having more extra electrons in the case of n type of material and if i am talking about p type of material i will be having more number of holes so this is how my dopant concentration and resistivity are related if i am having more number of electrons the resistivity will be further decreased it will be enhancing the conductivity okay so the more number of electrons the more the conductivity and lesser the resistivity so whenever i have more dopant concentration the resistivity will be decreased so the p type will be having a higher resistivity than the n type because obviously we know the movement or the mobility of holes is higher is uh, lesser than the mobility of the electron so this is the reason we have uh, the higher resistivity of the p type of impurities okay or we can uh, talk about the boron if i am uh, doping with boron so that time we will be having higher resistivity due to the mobility of holes now coming to the dopant concentration and resistivity higher dopant concentration which means more carriers and i have already told you we have more electrons or holes and we will be having higher conductivity or i can say we have lower resistivity we know electrons move faster than the holes so n type silicon has lower resistivity then p type silicon as the same dopant concentration so these are the references and i hope you like this session if you like it share it with your friends push the like button and do subscribe the channel thank you so much and if you have any kind of doubt you can reach out to me or you can put the doubt in the comment i will be trying to revert as soon as possible thank you so much